Welcome to Zoo Babies, where we visit some very strange and exotic newcomers to zoos and wildlife parks around the world. Everyone got snap happy as they clicked away on their cameras for a memento of a baby lemur that was born recently in Denmark's Cologne Zoo. Lemurs can be identified by their large mirror-like eyes and long tails. Lots of friendly and excited visitors huddled up to the glass to say hello to this playful animal, which has not yet been named, because nobody knows whether it's a boy or a girl. Lemurs are often given the nickname Ghost because of their bright eyes and the wailing sounds they make. They're endangered in the wild, and the Danish zoo is very happy to welcome the new addition to its family to help preserve the species. This little lemur is snacking on its favorite food, fruit. Lemurs also like to eat leaves, flowers and insects. Lemurs are called half monkeys from the island of Madagascar. Of course, they're whole animals, but we wanted to distinguish them from the higher apes. Nearly all lemurs have long tails, which they use to communicate with one another and to help them balance when leaping between trees. They have long toes for gripping tree branches. Lemurs have nails rather than claws on the ends of their toes, except for the second one. They also have a great sense of smell. This six-week-old baby gorilla is called Mary Two. She was taken into the intensive care unit at hospital after staff at her zoo in the German city of Munster found her sick in her mother's arms. The tiny ape needed water and had low blood sugar levels. According to the zoo, she's being well looked after and is on her way to becoming healthy again. Of course, Mary Two's mother misses her very much, but she needs to stay in the hospital so she can get better. Gorillas grow up to be very big animals. They live in forests and move around by walking on their knuckles. But for now, little Mary Two needs to be carried everywhere, and hospital staff take her out in a stroller. Keepers are preparing to take Mary Two back to Munster Zoo from the hospital very soon, where she can be closer to her mother. This zoo in Moscow is very happy that it has lots of new arrivals to show to the public, the babies of red and pink flamingos. The flamingo chicks are old enough to walk independently and to follow their parents through the enclosure. Baby flamingos are born white, only becoming pink or red when they're two years old. In order for flamingos to breed, it's very important to have a large flock and they like to breed in warm and humid climates. Some zoos have tried to cheat flamingos into breeding by putting mirrors in their enclosure, so the birds think there are lots of them. But flamingos aren't that easily fooled. This zoo has 35 flamingos and they breed very well. With two more female flamingos sitting on eggs, the Moscow Zoo is very proud of the number of babies they will have managed to breed by the end of the year. When they're born, flamingo chicks look nothing like their mother and father. Their beaks are straight, they're covered with lint, and little by little they grow and start sprouting feathers. Their beaks bend and they begin to look like real flamingos. Because they have long legs, they can wade much deeper into water than most other birds. Their webbed feet support them on the soft mud. When the water gets too deep, flamingos swim on the surface while feeding, using their webbed feet to propel them. While resting, they usually face the wind. This stops the wind and rain from penetrating their feathers. And when resting on one leg, Flamingos can often be seen swaying back and forth in the wind. Oh, 
Rome Zoo's baby giraffe, Esperanza, is a very popular attraction. She was born in summer and quickly became one of the park's stars. Did you know that the giraffe has one of the shortest sleeping patterns of any animal? They can sleep as little as 10 minutes a day. Zookeepers recently noticed that little Esperanza was having problems walking. They noticed something a little different growing on her front legs and found that her front hooves were becoming ingrown. Giraffes have slightly longer forelegs than their back legs. They usually amble at a slow pace, although when chased they can run extremely fast in short bursts. Because of the giraffe's long legs, it runs in an unusual way. The left legs move together, followed by the right at a slow speed, and the back legs cross outside the front at fast speed. It can often look like they are wobbling. The giraffe defends itself by kicking with great force to warn off its predators, and lions are the only animals that are a serious threat to giraffes. The problem that Esperanza is having with her legs is extremely rare in giraffes and more regularly affects horses. The zoo made the decision to operate on Esperanza to make sure she wouldn't lose her ability to run and kick. A team of vets performed the operation to help her. Not surprisingly, it was difficult to find an operating table large enough for even a baby giraffe. So the zoo's vet team laid her on a sheet on the ground to perform the surgery. Esperanza is now walking carefully around her garden area and staying close to her mother. The operation on her leg has helped her move around so she can make her way over to the trees and graze on the twigs and leaves all day. Giraffes first chew their food, swallow for processing, and then push the semi-digested cud up their necks and back into the mouth in order to chew again. They repeat the process several times for each mouthful. Esperanza swings her tail happily as she eats. It's a race against time to deliver the expensive and important treats in less than 12 hours to two koalas waiting impatiently in a Belgium zoo. The eucalyptus leaves are being flown to Belgium from Britain. Kulongaluk and Digi Toda are the two koalas living at Plakendale Zoo. They have very strict dietary needs and require specific types of eucalyptus or gum tree leaves in order to survive. The koala's favorite food is not grown anywhere in Belgium. So for many years, a small plane has been used to fly fresh eucalyptus leaves daily to the zoo. And the kind pilot does it for free, for the sake of the cuddly koalas all over Europe who feed on these leaves. Koalas originally come from Australia and are now on the list of endangered species. Their name comes from an Aboriginal word meaning no drink, because the animal gets most of its water from the eucalyptus leaves. Koalas can live from 10 to 20 years of age, depending on whether they're in the wild or captivity. Just like humans, they are very social animals and like to have lots of other koalas around them. This female, did show Toda, is only two and a half years old and she recently had a cub. But you can't see it because the cub is still growing in the mother's pouch. During its time in the pouch, it will grow ears, eyes and fur. After six months, the joey then begins to explore outside the pouch, looking for lots of fresh eucalyptus leaves to munch on. Koalas have many nicknames, such as teddy bear and tree bear, although they aren't actually bears. They live in trees and have large, sharp claws to help them climb up the tree trunks. Stuttgart Zoo in southern Germany presented four-month-old polar bear cub Wilbear for the first time recently 
accompanied by his mum, Corinna. First time mother Corinna has been praised by the zoo's director for being the perfect mother to little Wilbear. She is always looking around, and as soon as he makes a sound, she runs over to protect her precious baby. Wilbear is making great progress. Apart from drinking his mother's milk, the fleecy cub has developed a taste for chicken meat, according to his proud keepers. Life here at Stuttgart Zoo is generally very relaxing. There's not a lot to do apart from swimming and playing in and around the water. Polar bears live near the sea and in very cold climates. Being by the water is very natural to polar bears as they are excellent swimmers. And thanks to their fur and thick layer of blubber, they're able to keep very warm even when they're in the icy water. Corinna encourages Wilbear to come into the water often so she can teach him how to swim and feel confident because this is where he'll be spending most of his time. At this stage, Wilbur is a little nervous, but soon feels brave enough to paddle out and swim with his mother. As well as being great swimmers, polar bears have a brilliant sense of smell, which they use for hunting food. When they grow up, adult polar bears live quiet lives by themselves. But when they're young, they like to play together for hours at a time and often fall asleep cuddled up to each other. Did you know that polar bears are twice as big as the lion or tiger? Their ears and tails are tiny compared to their stocky legs and bodies. Polar bears' feet are also very large, so they can propel themselves forward when swimming. The pads of their paws are covered with small, soft and round coverings, which provide a grip on the ice. Will Bear is becoming stronger by spending a lot of his time in the water, and hangs out near his mother to stay warm after his big swim. A female cobra in London recently produced a clutch of 10 eggs, and the tiny babies are miniature replicas of their parents, although they have a very different skin tone. Even at this age, they already have poisonous venom glands and fangs capable of spitting. But keepers at the London Zoo were amazed to learn that four of their spitting cobras were actually not spitting cobras at all. The handlers, who noticed that the colour and pattern of their scales was different to other red spitters in the zoo's collection, made the discovery. A researcher from a biological science school in Wales has recognized the snake as an entirely new species. This new discovery means scientists can look at the snake in a whole new light. They can study its habitat, population, threats, and other factors that they already know about other snakes. For a start, they're a different color. Nothing like as bright colored, not as red. And then over a period of days and weeks, as the, the senior staff were working with them, it became evident that there were some more subtle differences in terms of their patterning and also in terms of their behavior. In fact, they were just much more timid, much more reluctant to stand up and flare the hood that everybody associates with a cobra, a very sort of quiet and docile species. The sign outside the snake's pen at the zoo will soon be changed to tell the public of the new species, which can be told apart from the red spitting cobra by the shape and pattern of their throat and overall body color. The snakes are dangerous and need to be picked up by a hook so the handlers don't get bitten. Children and adults watch safely from behind the glass. Red spitting cobras normally have a single broad dark band across the throat. The new species is called the Nubian cobra and the rest of its body is dark brown. Two spotted jaguar cubs and three young lion cubs became the star attractions at Dortmund Zoo in Germany recently. The jaguar babies were born to Mother Chica and they've been having lots of fun getting to know each other as children peep in through the window to watch them play. Male lion baby Aslan and his sisters Anna and Ayla were busy fooling around in the open-air enclosure 
playfully biting a plastic box with their razor-sharp teeth. Chica keeps them clean by licking their fur and keeping a watchful eye on them so they all stay out of trouble. It's not just humans that need to go to the dentist. Monkeys need a checkup too. This female monkey enjoyed a visit from dentist Ari Greenspan, who's doing checkups on all the monkeys' teeth at the zoo. He spoke with lots of other dentists to work out the best procedure because he had to take out two broken teeth and fill a cavity, which had been making the poor monkey very uncomfortable. The young female named Shiroko got to have her teeth brushed at the end of the operation so she could show off her shiny teeth to all the other monkeys in the zoo. The procedure went very well for Shiroko and the dentists were pleased that they were able to fix her tooth and fill the cavity so her mouth wouldn't hurt anymore. Animals and monkeys that live in zoos get their teeth checked often but when they're very young. This monkey is a mandrill monkey, which is usually found in Africa and is a close relative of the baboon. These penguins were born in Antarctica, but now live in Tokyo's Ueno Zoo. The zoo keepers recently decided to let the king penguins go for a weekly walk around the zoo during the winter time to make them feel like they were back at home. The penguins march for 30 minutes and waddle through the zoo much to the delight of the children and adults who line the route. The zoo says that since the penguins have started their regular exercise, they are a lot happier and even get fidgety just before their walk begins. Most penguins feed on fish and squid and other forms of sea life as they swim underwater. They spend half their lives on land and half in the oceans. Penguins walk huge distances in the wild and either waddle on their feet or slide on their bellies when they're in the snow. This so-called tobogganing allows them to save energy and move quickly at the same time. It was so cute to watch them coming waddling all together. They also jump with both feet together if they want to move more quickly or cross steep or rocky terrain. Zoo workers in Leipzig, southwest of Berlin, have just welcomed this beautiful new lion cub to their zoo. Everyone who was anyone was there to take lots of photos of this soft and furry creature that had a very smooth birth. The lion is the second largest living cat after the tiger, and this male cub will grow up to have a hairy mane around his face. The Angola lion is threatened by extinction in its natural African habitat, and Leipzig is looking for zoos across Europe to take part in a breeding program. The cub will probably spend the first two and a half years of his life in the zoo before being sent on to another zoo to mate. The zoo director was there to introduce the gorgeous new cub to the photographers and children who came to visit and pat its soft fur. Two giant pandas were married in Thailand to mark the 28th birthday of their zoo and celebrate the start of what keepers hope will be their mating season. The pretend panda bride wore a traditional red and white Chinese headdress and rode in a convertible car at the head of a parade of people waving Chinese and Thai flags and mascots. Lots of their friends from the zoo also joined the crowd, including this monkey on a bike. The parade stopped for a while at a school en route, where Thai dancers and dragon dancers in traditional costumes performed for the crowd. The music played loudly, and this tiger was eager to be part of the action. 
The traditional Chinese ceremony was held for five-year-old male Chuang Chuang and four-year-old female Lin Hui, lent to the zoo in the northern city of Chiang Mai. Let me bless you to have a baby soon, Chinese consul Peng Ren Dong told a couple dressed as pandas during a colorful tea ceremony, which is part of Chinese wedding rites. Pandas are known to be very difficult to breed in captivity. But after the tea ceremony, the real pandas, which eat only bamboo, were showered with fruit, ice cream and a three-tiered cake decorated with dragons. Officials at the zoo say they hope that Thailand's hot climate will help bring forward the pandas' mating season to November from the March-May period in their native China. And they've all got their fingers crossed that the pandas will have lots of babies. But in the meantime, these two pandas are rather busy eating all the sweets and cake from their big wedding day. Pandas have rather large appetites, so they could be there for a while. Have you ever heard of an anteater? They get their name because they like eating ants and termites. Their proper name is pangolin, and they are an endangered species. This anteater was brought to the Sanjay Gandhi Zoological Park in India's eastern Patna city in a wounded state. It was first treated at the zoo's hospital, and the zookeepers have decided to keep it permanently in the zoo to help look after it. It's difficult to keep an animal like this in a zoo, as it eats ants and termites and stays inside its burrow all day. Anteaters only like to come out of their burrows at night. The zoo authorities are also making efforts to feed the pangolin things other than ants and termites, like this egg, in the hope it will get more healthy. Anteaters have large claws at the front of their feet, which curl under when they walk. They don't have very good eyesight, but they do have a great sense of smell. They live in swamps and forests in the wild, and their long noses function as vacuums for sucking up insects. They have sticky tongues and can eat up to 30,000 ants in a day. The local children have come to see the pangolin to make it feel better. The zoo is also trying to make artificial anthills and is making a special cage for the pangolin to stay in where they hope it can make a burrow for itself. Anteaters have coarse hair and scales all over their skin. They like to spend time by themselves, especially when they grow up. Join us next time on Zoo Babies for lots more chicks, calves and cubs.